Liberalism is an ideology that currently exists in much of the world and is often considered the dominant ideology in the world today. Today, Liberaven will come on to talk about liberalism. So to start, how would you define liberalism? Liberalism is a broad political philosophy, primarily concerned with constructing a society in which all individuals, equally recognized under the law, have the freedom to maximally pursue their own interests and are protected from the potential tyranny of government through constitutionalism and consent. How do you ensure that the government doesn't overstep its boundaries? Liberals tend to believe in a separation of powers. This means that the various branches of government are independent of each other and act as a check on each other. Liberals also tend to believe in constitutional restraints that both bind these branches of government to their respective roles, as well as ensuring that citizens have certain rights that cannot be infringed upon. Nobody, not even a president or a prince, should be above the law. What's your economic policy? Well, liberalism stresses this idea of economic freedom. For classical liberals and neoliberals, this generally means minimal government involvement. However, for social liberals like myself, we stress that true competition comes from restrictions on monopolies and regulations that foster market pluralism, as well as providing quality education, universal health care, and substantial welfare so that every individual has the freedom to compete on an equal playing field. What are your thoughts on the criticism of democracy, that it oppresses the minority? Uh, yes, whilst democracy is very important to liberalism as it is a mechanism by which people can have control over the institutions that govern them, it does pose this issue. Namely, that if power is granted to a greater collective, they may exercise that power in ways contrary to the desires of the individual, be that uh, suppressing a practice deemed immoral or degenerate by the majority, using the power of the state to direct resources from a minority voting bloc to a majority, or for any other sectional interests based on cultural, social or economic notions of group conflict. This may be tackled by not only securing the aforementioned individual rights, which supersede regular legislation, but also through the decentralization of democratic systems to give the individual greater democratic power relative to their polity, as well as a general culture shift away from group-based politics towards universal policymaking. Unfortunately, however, democracy is not and never will be the perfect instrument. It's just that the alternative is usually worse. What are your views on culture? Well, culture is a very amorphous concept regarding shared values and practices between social groups. Due to the unique experiences and social interactions each individual has in their life, in a sense, each individual has their own culture, but can have so much in common with others that we can perceive a collection of social constructs which we associate with certain geographical areas, social classes, or even our niche hobbies and interests. The liberal notion of toleration suggests that individuals should be able to live as they see fit and associate with those who they wish to associate with. Therefore, even if we personally disagree with any given cultural practice, we should still allow its existence and the free exchange of culture between individuals, unimpeded by the notion that any one group has a monopoly on any cultural practice. This does not mean that one cannot deem their culture superior in any way. In fact, this comes with the territory of subjectivity. And the free exchange of cultural practices and ideas should be in the pursuit of cultural improvement. In a sense, such a view as this may be part of a set of cultural values that is in the liberal interest to promote. The paradox of tolerance highlights that unbounded tolerance undermines the idea of toleration itself, if the intolerant are tolerated. And as with anything in a liberal society, any cultural practice which limits the freedom or consent of individuals within that society may be subject to limitation on those grounds too. How do you prevent the paradox of tolerance from becoming an issue? Well, the temptation, of course, is to restrict certain opinions from being aired in public, but I'm very guarded against that notion. To speak is, in some senses, the same as thinking, which is, I guess, a funky thought when thinking on the individual level, but on the societal level, this seems a suitable conceptualization. We exchange ideas through speech to come to better conclusions, and how can society come to the best conclusions without hearing all the arguments out in full? We can never be completely sure that the opinion we are endeavouring to stifle is a false opinion. That said, should the arguments fall short of the standards our philosophical values set, then they may be societally devalued just without the use of force. 
this does leave open the possibility for a section of society becoming enraptured in an intolerant ideology and using the levers of power for their ends. However, a well-functioning democracy is a guard against this should such a group form a minority opinion, and if it is the majority opinion, then I defer you again to my answer on the tyranny of the majority. Where do you believe rights come from? The government, nature, God, etc.? There are various schools of thought that liberals hold to when it comes to rights. Classical liberals usually subscribe to a concept of individual rights external to societal institutions, either divinely derived or by virtue of the liberty one would hold in the state of nature. This school of thought generally regards these rights as inalienable, and thus an individual or institution can be deemed to categorically be infringing upon uh, or categorically upholding such rights. An alternative view is that rights are a legal construct or a societal construct that constitutes a means to an end of maximising some form of utility. Utility in this context for me means the fulfilment of individual desires and by extension the liberty and means to pursue these desires. This does not mean that the rights one should have are dependent on the legal rights one does have. Conversely, through a rule utilitarian framework, one can prescribe a moral foundation for individual rights external from the law, which functions very similarly to this idea of natural rights. In that case, do you consider yourself a utilitarian? Yes, in regards to political policy at least. I think it makes sense that when constructing the rules of social organisation, we attempt to maximise the utility across that social organisation. I'm broadly from the same tradition as John Stuart Mill, but I possibly place an even greater emphasis on individual liberty as the hallmark of utility, as opposed to other notions of harm and well-being. For me, each individual has a unique consciousness, experience and set of interests, which can only be legitimately defined by themselves, as we do not have the means to experience what another experiences. Therefore, maximising utility requires the freedom and means for people to pursue their own desires, rather than an external judge deciding what is in an individual's best interest on their behalf. There is a worry that utilitarianism can fall into a trap wherein the interests of some individuals are sacrificed for the greater good, which is an uncomfortable notion to many liberals. However, if utility is relative to the individual, and their own desires, then valid notions of the collective good are only those which constitute the maximal individual good. Do you think that liberalism will last into the future? Do you see it as in decay? It's in the interests of our ideological opponents to spin this narrative that liberalism is dead, or at least on the decline, and certainly anti-liberal sentiment seems to be on the rise. Part of this comes from a particular and common spin on the failures of our current system. It would seem that many people lay all the blame at liberalism's feet, completely ignoring the forces of conservatism, socialism and other ideological stances that have shaped Western politics. Many people seem not to realise that liberalism has severe criticisms of many so-called liberal democracies, whether that be government surveillance, disproportional voting systems, lack of social mobility, unequal application of law, monopolisation, corruption, legislated morality, and so on. Moreover, not only has liberalism nowhere near run its course in the West, but it has hardly reached many parts of the world, such as Russia, China, and parts of the Middle East. There is still a huge role for liberalism as the ideology of liberation in the face of authoritarian governments. And even if the world were more liberal, people still should understand that liberalism is not merely concerned with what is, but an ideology of what should be. A world in which individuals have the freedom and means to pursue their desires, however that may come to manifest in the future as liberals continue to adapt to an ever-changing world. Liberalism has, and always will be, a progressive ideology. What do you think about the rise of the alt-right and socialist movements? What's the liberal solution to deal with this? It's certainly concerning from a liberal perspective. I think the setbacks we've had over the last decade or so and growing discontentment has been capitalised on by enemies of liberal ideas, wherein many well-meaning liberal-minded people have been swept up in anti-liberal propaganda of the left and right. I think this is very much evident with the so-called classical liberal types who end up buying into conservative or even fascistic notions in what is packaged as a pragmatic response to perceived enemies of freedom. And on the left, many liberals who 
see all the corruption and inequality can often get swept up in the deep rabbit hole that is Marxist theory, insisting that they are the good socialists who can offer true freedom, failing to acknowledge that however libertarian one's intentions are, a collectively owned economy will still require severe restrictions on economic freedom to pragmatically enforce, and as history teaches us, socialist movements are heavily susceptible to authoritarian tendencies. Liberal representatives need to take their heads out of the sand and listen to the concerns of people who might be susceptible to these ideologies and find liberal solutions to the issue. Too often have I seen so-called liberals in power just trying to scoff at or actively shut down dissent, thereby further disillusioning liberal-minded people. A radical liberal revival is needed. For me, this should include a substantive expansion of welfare, a reassertion of the civic nation, tax reform to favour working people over corporations, enshrining digital privacy rights, the levelling out of generational wealth, a mass repealing of outdated and overreaching laws, as well as an active pluralisation of the economy to reduce both the state and corporate power, thereby increasing the level of business and asset ownership across the greater population. Do you have any closing thoughts? In an age of ever more entrenched state and corporate power, rising inequality and a greater presence of extreme collectivist and authoritarian movements, Liberalism is needed more than ever. Its principal aim to liberate the individual from systems of control and oppression is as relevant now as it always has been. I fear, though, that there is an increasing lack of exposure to strong liberal arguments, due to both the lack of capable liberal leadership as well as the anti-liberal propaganda of both the left and the right. For anyone without a degree in political science, there seems to be a grave misunderstanding of what the ideology is and what it wants to achieve. Even though many people, at least in the West, are very much liberal-minded, this misunderstanding is what I spend a lot of my time attempting to combat. It's probably a fool's errand, but... I believe very strongly in liberalism, and I think there is a grave danger in the idea that society may be turning its back on liberal principles. Thanks for coming on. You can find his links in the description below. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.